Trey Lance, Ollie. Now, we have to address this. There is a magazine behind me <laughs> which says the year of Trey Lance starts now. Um, he went to the ground after being tackled on a QB run and it it now seems, if you want to confirm this to me now that uh, Kyle Shanahan's confirmed, he's broke his ankle and that's, that's mm-hmm. him out for the season. And I know for a lot of people listening wherever you are in the world Niners fans or just general NFL fans will, will be gutted for Trey Lance who now I think you were the one that tweeted that he's only going to have played maybe three to five games in, in three years which is devastating for him yeah you're taking the totality of the three years so you have the COVID season at North Dakota State so he only does the one game in that final North Dakota State game a game they only put on exclusively for him as kind of a, a thing for his draft selection then obviously he sits um the majority of the rookie season he plays the two games now he plays the one game plus a quarter today and then has the ankle injury and it's just, I mean it's devastating for him obviously um it looked like uh the Dak situation from the very off and this is a guy whose game is obviously built around athleticism and you you know we can go through the Jimmy of everything. We can go through where this leaves the Niners. But just for Trey Lance, I mean, beyond the obvious um, human side of it in terms of the injury and the recovery and just how much it stings for him having put so much effort in to get to the league, having to sit for the year and then getting his big opportunity and ending that way. Just in terms of his development as a player, if you remove it from that, that side we discussed there is, man, that's not a lot of football in a lot of years. You know, he didn't play much football in high school. He barely played football in college. Now he's barely played football in the NFL. And the, the development cycle in the NFL is already shortened, right? After we kind of know after two years now with these guys, right, whether they're going to be good enough or not. The rookie extension starts to linger on the horizon by year three. You start having initial discussions before you get into one of these Lamar Jackson situations. And that's going to be a completely different timeline for the Niners. And who knows what kind of player is going to come back like he was a a role player anyway. There were some pretty sub- substantive issues going into the season that we, were, we thought maybe you would see progression over the second half of the season. The Niners were willing to forego some of the early season issues with the hope of what the ceiling could be down the line, maybe by, by January and playoff time. And now that's just completely wiped out. And maybe he comes back like a different player. Look, Dak was a totally different quarterback from the guy he was pre that ankle injury to the guy Dak Prescott is now. And then obviously you get the issue where one injury, particularly in the, the lower body can lead to a whole bunch of other injuries. So it's just any way you look at it, it just stinks from all angles. Home debut, a couple of, if, if even a couple of minutes in as well. And mm-hmm. ironically, it, there, there's two factors for me. It's the first one of, and I know we'll talk about this in a minute, the whole restructure and keeping Jimmy Grappolo there, which now looks like some sort of masterstroke, even though there was so much, talk and debate all off season I mean the amount of conversations that me and you and the rest of the team in gridiron have had around this quarterback <laughs> I know. controversy off camera is nuts and I I did think like I, I, I would have loved and I still do want to see Trey Lance uh, proceed and do well at that position in San Fran but I did think we would see Jimmy at some point this season if he wasn't traded that being said Ollie Cal Shanahan on Monday said quote just like all players we listen to anybody on anything, and that was. But he was talking about trades, so it's just crazy how this league can change in four and five days. And now they look at maybe opening up that offense a bit because it was quite. I don't want to say limited, but it it wasn't amazing tonight. But they they got the job done against Seattle with with Jimmy there, and now they have to go on into week three and uh, completely reevaluate their offense. And maybe Jimmy might be allowed to train with the first teamers now. Who knows? I, I don't think they have to completely change everything. I saw that a lot about what will they do now going back to Jimmy. I mean, they've been running that offense for years with Jimmy. They evolved it with Jimmy. They, they were trying something different with Trey Lance. Obviously, everyone will have seen the run pass splits and the difference between Jimmy playing and Trey playing. When Trey plays, they run the ball like 70% of the time. And when Jimmy plays, they throw the ball about 70% of the time. I don't think it's that difficult for them to, to chop and change from one one system to the other. I think it's pretty easy. Um, they're basically running the same plays. There are certain plays available to them when Trey Lance is available, and those plays change slightly when Jimmy Garoppolo goes in. Most of that stuff is option-based football, and that's still in the playbook, irrespective of who's the quarterback, just one is a triple option, which involves no one else on the offense anyway, and one is a, a two-way go option, which is either hand the ball off or throw the ball. So changing any of the verbiage, any of the timing, all that stuff doesn't matter. Um, and then, yeah, there's the voice and the huddle voice at the line of scrimmage stuff, but they've obviously known Jimmy forever. So I, it, it does go to show it's it's um, somewhat ironic that they they held him all off season in kind of the hope that someone would have an injury, right? That was 
why they held on to his rights all that time and why they were having the back and forth with him over the whole offseason. And it's ironic that they were the ones who had the devastating quarterback injury and now they need Jimmy Garoppolo to step up. But I think it's funny because in the short term, I mean, you, we all saw the game that the offense clicked much better when Garoppolo is there. He just he takes the easy layups that Trey Lance was finding difficult, right? It's that simple. They, they moved to Trey Lance because they thought it would elevate the ceiling because he could push the ball down the field better. And in the world the defense we're, we're facing now, that's something you need. And he was a rushing threat. And that is another thing that's just essential with the style of defense we're seeing now. It wasn't a knock on Jimmy Garoppolo or even saying that Trey Lance was better than Jimmy Garoppolo in the time being. It was that that skill set fit where the league was going more. And so they wanted to be on that evolutionary cycle. Garoppolo is a better quarterback right now than him. So short term, it makes him a better team. Now, does it make them better in January? That's the concern. We have seen the limits with Garoppolo. He's just not that guy when you get to January, February in the playoffs. So that will remain the concern, right? And, may, and they are good enough. They've got the Super Bowl with them before. They're good enough to scheme around it. they got good enough players to make plays irrespective of Jimmy Garoppolo. But they, it's not as if um, it was silly to move on for Garoppolo now they're better with Jimmy. It's like they were always going to be better in the short term with him anyway. That was a play for January so that the calculus is still the same. It'll be interesting where they are in January with Jimmy Garoppolo and hopefully George Kittle's playing by then. Second straight week out this this week with, mm-hmm. with a groin injury. Uh, and you couldn't make this up, Ollie. They now go into Denver next week and play Nathaniel Hackett. I'm sure they'll be counting down the uh, the days to that, like many people in in Denver are. Uh, the, the one question I did want to ask you before we move on to the Colts here is, what do you think their ceiling is now with Grappolo? Do, do, do you look at it very much the same? Because I, because I know you've spoken about it there, about Trey and Jimmy G. They've got a guy there that has played in the Super Bowl with the Niners, almost won the Super Bowl with them, uh, against the Chiefs, and he was in the NFC Championship game last year. So he, why he has not completed or fulfilled that exact victory in terms of winning the Super Bowl, he does have experience of being there. And, I mean, if you look at, like for example, the Cowboys, where Dak Prescott's out for how many weeks, and I know Cooper Rush had a decent enough performance, for them, and they get over the line tonight. At least they have a quarterback there that they can go, okay, well, he's been here. He knows, he knows his team. He knows his offense. Surely that's a pro for them as well. Yeah, I mean, if you go through just now and do the NFC quarterbacks whilst Dak is out, Garoppolo's probably fifth, sixth, somewhere in there. I mean, the NFC stinks. So um, their, their ceiling, their, their expectations shouldn't change. That's a championship-caliber roster. He is good enough to get you to championship games. Now, he's not going to decide the championship games. That's the difference, right? Mahomes decided the Super Bowl um The the defense has basically decided the NFC title game. He wasn't good enough to overcome structural flaws in the offense and how good the Ravens defense was in the championship game. So he's just he's just not a championship game decider, which means someone else on the on the team has to be, whether it's the entire defense, which is the way football is in 2022, or there's someone super special on that offense, which would probably be Debo or Kittle, right? So that's just where we're at. Now it, it getting into playoffs, it just rolls the dice, isn't it? That's 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 the reality. And he is good enough to get you into the playoff and then take the roll of the dice. So, you know, he's got as far in NFC uh, championship runs as Aaron Rodgers at this point, right? So, um, I, to me, the expectations of them don't change. They, they have championship expectations at least to get to the NFC title game. Now, you know, they, that, I'm not saying that if they don't get there, it's a, it's a disappointment, but um, they are good enough, I, I think, still to get back there. They have every other piece that, that is needed.